Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this evening's semi-final debate. My name is Anthony Lupino, and I am the chairman of this debate. The timekeeper is Balin Powerty. This debate will be judged by a panel of three adjudicators, who are Mr Huey, Mr Wilkins, and Mr Morden. The topic of this debate is that the statue of Captain Cook in Hyde Park, Sydney, should be removed. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Rushdover College. The negative team seated to my left is from Uriopta High School. The speaking time for this debate is eight minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time, and a double bell will sound at the speaking time. Please ensure that your mobile phones are switched off. I declare this debate open and call up the first affirmative speaker, Alex Carter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that the statue of Captain Cook in Hyde Park should be removed, with we the affirmative agreeing with the topic. We would like to define it as the statue of British navigator and explorer Captain Cook should be taken out of the public space of Hyde Park in Sydney and put somewhere else, following the recent graffitiing of the monument on the basis of racist and historical inaccuracy. Tonight, I will contextualise the issue and consider how the world has changed from 1879 to now, how the statue is disrespectful to Aboriginal people, and finally the ideal place to put the controversial monument. Owen will discuss the public response to the issue, the misinformation spread by the statue, and finally how it would follow other real world examples in taking it down. Finally, Xavier will rebut and sum up our points. Contextually, ladies and gentlemen, the statue of Captain James Cook in the south of Hyde Park has sparked some political debate due to the recent graffitiing of the monument earlier in August this year. The graffiti, which says no pride in genocide and change the date, was sprayed over the engraved writing on Cook's statue which states Captain Cook discovered this territory in 1770. The issue here is centrally about the word discovered with many Aboriginal people claiming that the statue is inaccurate and disrespectful to them. As Cook did not so much discover Australia, but instead landed upon already inhabited shores and reported it to the British Empire. Officially unveiled to the public on the 25th of February, 1879, the historic piece shows Cook holding out a telescope in his left hand, with his right hand extended upward on a Moira granite pedestal based on information provided by the City of Sydney's website. What's become synonymous with imperialist views by some Aboriginal elders, from the authoritarian stance to the wording of the engraving, the statue is being encouraged by members of the public to be removed, obviously evidenced by the graffiti <coughs> stunt. Although we do not believe defacing the piece was the best way to make a statement, the public outcry does show, however, that social values are shifting, and so too should the statue. <coughs> Cook's statue needs to be removed from Hyde Park, as it is seen as offensive to many Aboriginal leaders in the community. The message that the statue conveys is not one that many see as acceptable in our society, and which is more empathetic of the plight of Indigenous than it was in the past, when the statue was erected. The fact stands that the climate we live in today is vastly different from 1879, with 1921's Chief Protector of Aborigines stating, shelter for many Aboriginal workers was worse than the, what the British man would provide for their pet horse, motor car or prize cattle. Obviously, it was a time riddled with racial mistreatment. Today, we are working towards a greater equality for all people, and yet, we still see statues displaying attitudes of those times on display in a public park. Seen as insensitive, according to Aboriginal Senator Patrick Dodson, the things that the statue represents completely counters everything we've been working towards. It's symbolic of the anti-progression we struggle against daily. It simply does not hold a place in Hyde Park in the current day, with Aboriginal journalist Stan Grant claiming that the statue is a damaging myth. 
And although he condemns the extremist actions of graffiti in the statue, he's under the belief that it needs to be altered due to its adverse effects on addressing the plight of those in the indigenous community. The sheer fact that the statue was graffitied shows public outcry and protest that it does not fit into the larger puzzle that is our cohesive and progressive society, thus needing to be removed from Hyde Park. However, the question stands, what should be done with the statue? It needs to be moved, but it can't be altered or destroyed due to its national heritage listing. The whole solution lies within the moving of the statue to a museum, presumably the Australian History Museum, where it can be appreciated for the historical perspective it provides, rather than acting currently as a symbol of modern day misinformation. As Winston Churchill once said, study history, study history. In history lies all the secrets of statecraft. And it is essential that we have an understanding of the different socio-political socio climate of 1879. The monument of Cook is symptomatic of this antiquated attitude and shows to many the persistence of imperialist views. Due to this factor, it is unacceptable to have the statue in a public park where the location assumes relevance of these misguided ideas, but we should instead place it in a more acceptable place where it can be viewed with a lens that incites understanding that the statue is a piece of history and needs to be remembered for that. Regardless of how dark Australia's history is, it would be ill and even careless to shun the past and not acknowledge it for what it was in order to learn from those mistakes. Instead of hiding history or putting it in a um, instead of hiding history or putting it in a place that leaves it to spread false truths, we should instead preserve it in a museum for people to come to see as a work that represents ancient ideologies. As proof of such an idea functioning in our modern society, according to Stephen Frand Colton, a professor of Russian studies at Princeton University, at the collapse of the USSR, communist lead, statues of communist leaders like Stalin and Lenin were not all destroyed in a violent hate with people wishing to wash away history, but rather they were placed in a more suitable museum around Russia as not to forget the past, but instead keep it rightfully relegated to facilities that cater for historical preservation. As Owen will expand upon later, the misinformation spread by the statue is not merely theoretical, with people being fooled by the fact that the wording of the monument is in a public area where one would assume it still has contemporary relevance. It is evident that the only logical way to both preserve history and keep the populace both correctly informed and happy is to move Cook's statue to a museum where it can be admired for the perspective it gives on opinions from almost a century and a half ago. To conclude, the statue of Captain Cook in Hyde Park should be removed as it is clearly offensive to the wider community and should be moved to a museum where it can be viewed with a perspective that considers a historical understanding and attitudes of the past. Called upon the first negative speaker, Cassie Taylor.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic we're discussing here tonight is that the Captain Cook statue in Sydney's Hyde Park should be removed. This evening, as the negative team, we shall explain how this claim is completely illogical, would complete nothing to achieve leverage from any political debates, and that any such action would be devastating to Australian history and culture. Instead, we propose that there are better actions to settle this issue, which will be explained throughout our arguments. As first speaker this evening, I will describe to you that erasing history is a dangerous path for our nation to take, and that perspective of history changes over time, and that this statue is what makes Cook's historic contribution valuable. Our second speaker, Jess, will detail to you how the significance of the statue has been misrepresented in the media, and that it was made to commemorate Captain Cook's significance as a person. Our third speaker, Georgia, will summarise our main arguments and explain the flaws in our oppositions. We do agree with the opposition's definition. However, I'd like to refute their definition of discover. As defined by the Oxford Dictionary as, as to find unexpectedly or during a search, it does in no way state that to discover is to find something for the first time ever, nor that one has the right to claim something as their own because of this discovery. The wording on this does not sway to either side of this debate regarding Captain Cook and simply states that he discovered this land. Our opposition went, then went on to establish that Labor Senator Pat Dodson <coughs> wants the statue gone and also that Stan Grant, an ABC journalist and Indigenous editor, also said that it should be removed. It may come as a surprise, however, that Stan Grant did personally want it to stay. And Labor Senator Patrick Dodson stated to the ABC as well that he thought it needed to stay because people need a reopening and a re-understanding of our history, but to build more memorials of Indigenous leaders. With that said, my first argument tonight explains that the erasure of such cultural significance is an insulting path to take in Australia's collective history. And why maintaining structures so rich in our heritage is essential for our remembrance and commemoration of our past events. Memorials are a keystone aspect of our, any culture and are defined by Merriam-Webster as something which serves or preserves remembrance. It allows people to remember a deceased loved one or public figure. And because of these monuments, we are able to remember those who were important in our lives, from parents to public figures, and to show our respect for their contributions to society. The actions of Captain James Cook may be seen as unethical, but the Commonwealth's discovery of Australia's Sydney Cove was a key event in shaping Australia into the nation it is today. And although we have shortcomings, we are still stated by the 2017 Global Peace Index as one of the most peaceful and livable nations in this world. The statue and memorial of Captain Cook allows for the discovery and exploration of our nation's history, which strengthens understanding of our past and in turn helps us understand how we can improve our present. Other significant memorials include no November 11th, which is associated Australia-wide with the remembrance of those who died in the First World War. We pause to remember all of the men and women from the Australian Defence Force who made the ultimate sacrifice to our great nation. And while it would be unfair to compare the actions of the Defence Force to Captain Cook and our first European settlers, it shows that Australia is able to pause and reflect on actions which have shaped our nation into what it is today. The keeping of such a monument is integral to Australia's collective history and is listed as culturally valuable by the Australian government's prestigious Borough Charter. This means that the statue is aesthetically, historically, technically and socially valuable to past, present or future generations. This title of culturally significant is only used for few Australian monuments and this shows the deep connection to our European heritage, which we should not ignore. Because of this significance, destroying it is plain treachery, ladies and gentlemen, and other ways of commemorating aspects of our history should instead be explored, rather than erasing this monument. My second argument tonight shows that exploring monuments that we do not necessarily agree with is still invaluable to our society. With famed philosopher George Santanayana, stated that those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Labelling historical figures in such negative terms simply due to what they did and said in their time is unfathomably closed-minded 
approach to history, especially referring to Australia's colonial past. Social progress in Australia shows that it is clear that just because of the actions of Captain James Cook and those in his time would not be acceptable now doesn't mean that we can condemn him so far to tear down a monumental commemoration from Sydney's Hyde Park. When the statue was unveiled in 1878, over 40,000 people attended the event, foregoing a day's pay and everything else they had to do. And though both, for being both government and publicly funded, it is evident that for society at the time, it was of extreme significance and should not be discounted today. It is important to recognise that Australia has progressed and changed. And it is paramount that we recognise the events which occurred in Australia's formation and colonialisation, no matter how ethical, to aid in the continuous development of our young nation. Although Captain Cook's decisions can be seen as unethical, there are many early governors who committed severe atrocities and are still commemorated today. Alfred Deakin, the illustrator of the White Australia policy, has a two metre bronze monument standing proudly on Hopeton Circuit in Canberra without challenge. There are plenty of people who we commemorate but do not necessarily agree with or celebrate. We, we do not and we should not adopt every inscription on a statue or monument. It is a voice from a particular point in time and because of such, Captain Cook's statue in Hyde Park should be interpreted for what it is. A perspective of history from 1879 when the monument was erected. Studying the events of the past gives us an understanding of how the world came to be. Those who wish to keep the monument are not proposing that we adopt the beliefs of the 1800s nor that those who were impacted negatively by Captain Cook's choices should feel invalidated. Our nation is quickly becoming divided in opinion, and investigating how we work through struggles of the past is essential to us finding a way of moving forward together as a nation. The erasure of this statue will lead to no achievement from anyone, and leave a culturally significant and historic statue caught in an opinionated crossfire. No matter how much we condemn it, Captain James Cook led the Commonwealth discovery of Australia. The destruction of such a monument would never be interpreted as a method of achieving social justice in our time. Call upon the second affirmative speaker, Owen Selby. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and chairman. The topic for tonight's debate is that the statue of Captain Cook should be removed from Hyde Park. As the affirmative team, we strongly agree with this statement, as the statue's presence is causing members of our public to feel hurt and anger, and is helping to mislead some Australians and tourists into believing a false history of our country. However, before I elaborate on my own points, I will first point out some flaws within the opposition's arguments. The first negative speaker has constantly de described how destroying the statue would be a terrible thing and we should not start forgetting about a key event in our history. We completely agree. But the park is not necessarily a place to celebrate 
that a park is not a place to remember and learn about key events. That is a museum. As per our definition, we feel the removal of a statue should mean it is placed in a museum, a place for learning, a place for commemorating, a place for learning from the past, as the first negative speaker said was an important thing, and learning about the achievements of James Cook, but not necessarily saying he was the greatest man of all time, or putting him up on a monument literally above other people. Now, on to our own points. Within our modern context, the presence of the statue, and in particular the plaque, function as a reminder of the hurt and distress endured by our Indigenous people. Thus, it should be removed and placed in a museum. Consequent to white intervention, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians today support that the statue is little more than a provocation and a goading symbol of our past, often unspoken and misunderstood past. Late last month, Extreme cases of this pain was depicted through the acts of graffiti and vandalism, <coughs> with slogans stating no pride in genocide plastered along the Cook Monument. Such actions, though not condonable, cannot be ignored as they highlight the pain festing, festering within many Australians, which for the majority of us who have not experienced their plight will never fully be understood. Well-known Indigenous writer Stan Grant has stated that Cook's immortal presence in our biggest city perpetuates the invisibility of First Australians, whom until 1967 were not even considered citizens. Grant's premise is supported by Indigenous activists Gary Foley and Tony Birch, both esteemed historians, who have blazed the trail on the nomenclature issue and state that stripping the names of pioneers who murdered Indigenous people in their droves from federal and state electorates is a no-brainer. However, as Alex has mentioned, and the complete removal of the statue will undoubtedly cause further division amongst the population, and thus placement of the statue in the Australian History Museum, which conveniently sits on the border of Hyde Park, not far from the Supreme Council of New South Wales, Supreme Court of New South Wales, provides an opportunity for discussion and learning to occur around the monument whilst fittingly commemorating our history. Furthermore, friends, removal of the statue from Hyde Park and to a museum will allow for gaping holes in our history to be filled, as currently the statue and its plaque project a false image about Australia's past to the outside world. After the vandalism of the statues, The Guardian's Paul Daly interviewed over a hundred tourists and locals visiting Hyde Park. Many tourists were surprised to find out that the Europeans weren't the first people to set foot on Australian soil, and another admitted that they weren't even aware of Australian Indigenous history. The statue's presence and the plaque attached to it do nothing to help educate tourists or even our own citizens on our nation's true history. And by claiming that Cook discovered Australia, it is actually reinforcing this false perception of events for visitors who don't possess the full facts about our past. I mean, Cook isn't even the first European to visit Australia. Have we just forgotten Abel Tisman, who detailed the land some 20 years prior to Cook? The statue in Hyde Park is a populist tourist attraction, and it is simply wrong if we just stand by and do nothing to help remedy the fact. Foley explains that we do not learn history from monuments and statues, but from interrogating and challenging them. We learn our history from forensic archival research, from pushing back against orthodoxies, from debating and arguing what's on the page, said in the classroom. As a country, we are sending the message that Captain Cook was the first man to set foot on Australia, a message which simply cannot continue, and removing the statue from Hyde Park would certainly aid in changing the wider world and our own domestic views on Cook's place in Australian history. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to remember in this debate that when Cook's statue was put in place, it was in a different time, and the views on the treatment of Indigenous people by colonists the world over was vastly different to our modern, more empathetic opinions towards such matters. As revealed by historian Kent Watson, the governor who unveiled the statue in 1879, Sir Hercules Robinson, said that Captain Cook's achievements and how said that Captain Cook's achievements and how he paved way to the colonisation of Australia should be seen as an inspiration to all the people of Australia. Over a hundred years later, the Aboriginal people hold a slightly different view over the impact on their culture that Cook's actions directly led to. 
Australia must follow in other countries' leads in acknowledging that the world has changed and we can no longer point to certain figures in Western society as heroes without taking into account the negative impact these same figures have had on other cultures and peoples. As per the Rose debate in South Africa and the general lead disputes in the United States. Evidently, the Cook statue has a far more negative impact on members of the Aboriginal community than a positive one for other members of our society. Cook's achievements will still be able to be acknowledged and learnt about in museums and other memorials, but at this moment, Cook's statue sparks division, anger and pain. For the well-being of all members of our community, and as a simple sign of respect, this statue must be removed. After all, author George Orwell once said, the very concept of objective truth is fading out of history. Lies will pass into history. We have a chance here in Australia to prevent this. Thank you. Call upon the second negative speaker, Jess Dickinson. Good evening, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that the Captain Cook statue in Sydney's Hyde Park should be removed. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be false. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that the statue of Captain Cook is disrespectful to Aboriginal people. However, as we have already defined, the statement that Cook discovered Australia does not mean that he was the first here, but that he found it for the Commonwealth. The first speaker spoke of racial inequality. However, to say that the statue of Cook rep is representing this, it is simply incorrect. And to say that Cook caused racial inequality is a false cause fallacy. He spoke of the views of Stan Grant. And yet this journalist told the Australian that he accepts the statue remains. He and the second speaker said to put the, a statue into the museum, but Hyde Park is already a place dedicated to preserving the past and is home to many historical statues already, including one which commemorates Indigenous Australians' contributions in World War II. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that the statue of Cook leads to people feeling hurt and distressed in our modern context. However, as our first speaker said, historical perspectives are equally important to show the errors of the past and serve as a warning for it to not happen again. He said that Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians believe this cause, but this does not support his argument, as Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians believe both sides. He also said that the statue projects a false history. However, isn't removing an important historical monument projecting a false history in itself? Our first speaker, Cassie, spoke to you about how to remove the statue of Captain Cook would be erasing history, which would be a counterproductive act as a society whose goal is to work together. She said that the perspective of history changes over time and that the statue serves as a significant purpose to prevent the past from repeating itself. I will be speaking to you about how the media has misrepresented the purpose of the statue and that the best way to honour our Indigenous Australians is to educate and remember more parts of history rather than erasing it. The intent of, Cap of the Captain Cook statue in Hyde Park has been widely misunderstood by audiences 
and representation of the statue in recent media has taken away from the historical significance of the statue. Articles from The Guardian, Sydney Morning Herald, SBS and The Australian, which together reach an audience of around 1.8 million daily, all speak of the inscription on the statue that Captain Cook discovered this territory 1770, but fail to mention any other inscriptions. Also written on the statue are Cook's dates of birth and death, and so we can infer from this that the intent of the statue was not to claim that Cook was the first to find Australia or to discount the existence of original custodians of this land, but to inform about Captain Cook and his significance. By focusing on this inscription alone, the media is inaccurately representing the statue and audiences are misinterpreting its meaning, overlooking the historical context of the statue. According to the Newcastle Morning Herald, and Miner's Advocate, written on the unveiling of the statue on February 26, 1879, the Duke of Edinburgh clearly stated that the statue is made to assert the significance of Captain Cook in Australia's history, and spoke of Cook's life of great discoveries and scientific researches. The governor at the time, Sir Hercules Robinson, made a speech narrating Cook's life as a humane and just man. In accordance with the definition of the word discover, we can see that in this context, context, the statement that Cook discovered the land means that he had found Australia for the Commonwealth of the Nations and not that he was the first there. Captain Cook was a history-making cartographer and without his discoveries and mapping of countries and continents like Australia, Tahiti, New Zealand and Hawaii, we would not be where we are today. The country's misinterpretations of the intent of the statue can already be seen in the recent vandalism of the statue in Hyde Park. The expressions change the date and no pride in genocide falsely connect the monument of Captain Cook with racial injustice. To make the meaning of the statue more clear, rather than tearing it down, we should instead make minor adjustments to the wording of the plaque. Rather than discover this territory, 1770, the phrase led the Commonwealth's discovery of this territory, 1770, would more clearly express, particularly to readers of mainstream media, that Cook mapped Australia for the Commonwealth and not that he was the first here. The biggest argument against the statue is that it represents the racial injustices suffered by Aboriginal Australians at the time of European settlement. However, many Indigenous Australians are actually against the removal of the statue and believe that the act of erasing a part of history, rather than continuing to educate about it, would be counterproductive. <clears throat> we acknowledge that there is a problem with how we display our history in this country, that white Western history is often illustrated in text and in statues, leaving permanent marks on our planet. Our indigenous population, however, have an oral tradition and go out of their way not to leave permanent marks. The challenge is that to hear Indigenous perspectives, we have to listen. We need to listen to and encourage Indigenous perspectives rather than accept our knee-jerk reactions to media's inaccurate portrayal of the statue. Warren Mundine, Australian Aboriginal leader in the former National President of the Australian Labor Party, believes that the statue should not be removed. He told the Daily Telegraph that trying to have a Stalinist approach and whiting out people's names is false history. In Australia, the problem is an absence of memorials. We need more about our own people, our Indigenous people. The Orwellian approach of removing historical monuments inadvertently alters history, and Australia's European antiquity is part of our history regardless of whether we like it or not. To honour the traditional owners of this land, we should instead look to erecting more memorials of our Indigenous Australians, as Mundine said, and provide more information in Hyde Park about the historical context of the piece. Many other Indigenous Australians, such as Stan Grant, stand with Mundine on this issue. An Aboriginal Australian journalist, Stan Grant, told The Australian, I accept that it remains. Cook is part of the story of this nation. He too believes that the best course of action would be to alter the plaque and to educate rather than erase, to erase. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the negative team, believe that to remove the statue of Captain Cook from Sydney's Hyde Park would be a counterproductive act. The <coughs> argument for its removal is based on a false truth about the statue's purpose portrayed in the media. But to really honour our Indigenous Australians, we should be remembering them by educating about Australia's history rather than erasing it. 
Rather than silencing voices, we need to listen to more of them. Thank you. Well, upon the third affirmative speaker, Xavier Monson. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and chairman. The topic of tonight's debate is that the statue of Captain Cook in Hyde Park should be removed. This is a statement that we, as the affirmative team, agree with, on the grounds that the statue is misleading, historically inaccurate, and culturally insensitive. Before I move on to my summary of our team's case, I will rebut the points put forward by the negative team. The first negative speaker has stated that erasing history is dangerous and that the statue is classified as a culturally significant monument. This we, as the affirmative team, agree with. However, as per what our, what our first and second speaker said, the statue can simply be moved to a museum, thereby preserving its historical significance in, pla in a place more relevant to historical learning rather than its commemorative position, purely commemorative position in Hyde Park. The first negative speaker also talked about the definition of, this, of the word discover as it is to find unexpectedly. While this may be true of one definition of discover, the definitions are also open to an in interpretation of the indi individual and, this, and the word discover has been interpreted differently by the, people in, around, by the people around the area. It has been viewed as meaning that Took was the first one here and as, we have already, and as our second speaker pointed out, this message has been, uh, has been also picked up upon by, for by foreigners visiting the park who are unaware of the indigenous history of Australia. The first, the first negative speaker also talked about, about, the Senator, about Senator Dodson how he, and how he disagrees that the statue should be removed. However, we'd like to point out that Dodson, that Dodson stated that the statue completely counters everything that we've been working towards and is a symbol of the anti-progression we struggle against daily. She also, at first, negative speaker also talked about Alfred Deakin's statue, the White Australia policy, how he is still commemorated, even though he, he arguably formed a racist Australia. We, our stance on this is that these such monuments should also be removed, undoubtedly so. However, but this debate surrounds the Cook statue, as this is the form, foremost example of the of this in the current uh, public eye. Most of the points that we apply to, to Cook statue apply to many of the other commemorative statues as well. The second negative speaker talked about how Cook caused to, so, excuse me. The second negative speaker said that we said that we stated that Cook caused racial inequality. However, this is a straw man fallacy and is misrepresenting our, our case entirely. We are not stating that Cook caused Caused, the racial, caused racial inequality, we are stating that the statue remains a symbol of racial inequality and is viewed this way by, in the public eye. The second negative speaker also said that Hyde Park is already dedicated to history and thus a museum would, and thus the statue does not need to be removed, removed to, a, to the nearby museum. While this may be true to some people, as you have the evidence, as evidenced by the graffiti and the tourist survey, this is clearly not what people are seeing the statue in Hyde Park as. We see that people are being misinformed by this statue and they view it as, in, as promoting in, in, inequality and, in, and cultural insensitivity. Thus, it should be removed to the place, of, to the museum, where its place is in, where it's clear that this is a place of historical learning and that the statue has historical significance to the views of 1879. The second negative speaker 
said that removing the statue will, will in and of itself project a false history. However, this is false. Removing the statue will present no history at all. There's nothing there saying, there's nothing there to project a false history. The second negative speaker spoke about how the statue's purpose has been misrepresented in the media and that the statue's purpose is purely to inform. While this may be true on one level, I again ret find myself returning to the fact that, that it's not been viewed this way by the public, as evidenced again by the graffiti. It's clearly causing outrage and it's clearly causing discontent among, the, uh, among some people in the, in the society and thus should be removed. She also talked about how discover in this instance means discovered for the Commonwealth. However, this presents a Eurocentric view of Australian history and makes our induction into the Commonwealth a more important fact than the, than the people, than the Indigenous Australians who have been here for, for far, far longer. <coughs> uh, the second negative speaker also talked about how the, it, it's, the statute's connection to, race, to racism is false and that adjustments to the statute are, si <coughs> are the simple answer. However, the statue remains a symbol of the Eurocentric nature of our interpretation of Australian history, as I have already stated, and by placing it in the centre of a prolific park, perpetuates the myth of the Indigenous Australians being, in Cook's own words, some of the most rude and uncivilised people upon the earth. Before, this symbolic association is impossible to override, and removal of the statue makes a much-needed statement that we recognise and respect the role of our country's first denizens. She also, the second negative speaker, also stated that many Indigenous Australians are against the removal. However, we would like to question if there is any source behind this or if this is just an I mean, uh, un unverifiable assertion. She, she, yeah, she finally mentioned that, that the, the approach of removing the statute is Orwellian, an approach of removing history. And again, we come back to our argument about the museum. We are not removing history, we are reinterpreting it and placing this statue in a place where it can be viewed uh, as it is intended to, as, an, as, histor as informing history and, um, and learning about the past. Now on to my team summary. Our first speaker, Alex, began by providing historical context, including how the recognition of Australia's indig Indigenous people has changed drastically from 1879, the year the statue was erected, to the modern day. He spoke about how many Indigenous Australians see the statue and the inscrip and its inscription naming Cook as the discoverer as insensitive and disrespectful to the original people of the country. He continued to discuss that removal of the statue is not destroying or revising, his or revising history as it could simply be moved to a place that better represents the person, the purpose of historical learning rather than its commemorative position in the middle of a prolific park in a similar way to the relocation of statues after the fall of the Soviet Union. Our second speaker, Owen, highlighted the clear response this statue is eliciting from some people who find it insensitive, such as the recent graffiti, which, while a wrong, while a wrong way to go about things, but sparked much public discussion about the, about the meaning of the statue in contemporary <coughs> society. He explored how the statue is historically incorrect and actually provides a wrong and damaging view of our national history to those who visit Australia. Many remain ignorant of the important place Indigenous Australians have in our history, and the statute only serves to reinforce this Eurocentric view of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Cook is an historic figure of great importance for Australia. His exploration of the eastern coast directly led to colonisation by Britain, and thus to the Australia that we know today. And while his position should definitely be recognised, there are others who do not get the recognition they deserve. Australia's Indigenous people have occupied this land for nigh on 60,000 years, a mind-bogglingly large period of time but we have so far failed to give them the meaningful recognition they deserve. Venerating Captain Cook with a statue commemorating him as the discoverer of this territory ignores the fact that people were already here and communicates to the world that we do not care enough about the original settlers of this land. History is reinterpreted on almost a daily basis sometimes. And so I now leave you with a quote from British author Penelope Lively. Equally, we require a collective past, hence the endless reinterpretation of history frequently to serve the perceptions of the present. Thank you.
I call upon the third negative speaker, Georgia Thomas. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chair and fellow debaters. As I'm sure you're already aware, the topic for tonight's debate is that the Captain Cook statue in Sydney's Hyde Park should be removed. And as the negative team, we strongly disagree with this statement. The first speaker of the affirmative team has proposed that we remove Captain Cook's statue from Hyde Park and instead place it inside a museum. However, even if this statue were to be removed from the park, it won't necessarily solve anything regarding its controversial state. There is no way to know whether this will be considered enough by those in the public sphere who call for the monument's removal. This proposal still allows the statue to exist and be interpreted, just inside a different environment. The first speaker of the affirmative team also stated that by having this statue in a public park, relevance of it can be assumed. However, history is history. And because the significance of Cook's discovery will always remain a pivotal aspect of our Australian history, it will always remain as such. Museums are created to house history for public viewing, and by placing the statue in a museum, its relevance will still stand from a historical aspect. The first speaker also said that instead of hiding history by outrightly removing the statue, we should instead place it in the said museum. However, I believe by placing the statue in a museum, we are still hiding it from the public eye, just not by having it not displayed as publicly as it is in Hyde Park, we're still hiding it and removing it to some aspect. So to suggest that we are not hiding history by removing it from its current position is illogical because it is still being hidden to some extent. The second speaker said that a park is not a place to remember and learn about events. However, as our second speaker just stated, Hyde Park is notoriously known for depicting such pivotal aspects in Australian history and commemorating memorials and monuments. So would Hyde Park not be the most reasonable place to place a statue that celebrates one of the most prominent European figures in Australia's history? While a museum can house history to some extent, when Hyde Park has so longly been since past 1879 when this Captain Cook monument was erected, and it has been that housing place in, hist in Sydney to house history and monuments, why should we remove it from what could almost be just considered an outdoor museum and place it from into an inside one? The second speaker also said that the statue is a reminder of the hurt felt by Indigenous Australians. However, their proposal of simply moving the statue into a museum will do nothing to diminish this hurt, as it will still be available for viewing and interpretation by the public and Indigenous Australians, meaning it will do nothing to alleviate the pain felt that has been spoken of. However, if the proposals we have put forward were utilised, the amendment of the plaque and the creation of more statues <coughs> to commemorate Indigenous Australians, history can be accurately portrayed on the existing statue in Hyde Park, and Indigenous Australians can receive the proper recognition they have so long deserved, therefore paving the way to healing in a way that is not obscuring history. The second speaker brought up that Captain Cook was not the first European to find Australia. However, our amendment to the park that we proposed would clearly clarify that he discovered it with the Commonwealth of Nations, not necessarily with Europe. So therefore it eliminates that possible misinterpretation that he was the first European here, because we will clarify that he was here with the Commonwealth of Nations, not for the entirety of Europe. Both the first, second and third speakers have continually linked the statue to Indigenous Australians. However, our second speaker just made it clear that the original intent of the statue has been lost in translation through the media predominantly, and that the statue cannot, by definition of discover and by vandalism, be directly linked to the devastation Indigenous Australians have faced, and therefore their misinterpretation of the statue being continually presented in their arguments is invalid because the statue's original intent was not to forefront the pain felt and to forefront an interpretation that Captain Cook was the first person to discover Australia. It was there to commemorate him as a person and as a significant figure in Australian history. So by misinterpreting that in the same way the media has, they're only feeding into the public debate that has taken the heinous form of public vandalism. The third speaker said that the inscription on the statue reading discovered has been misinterpreted to mean that he was the first person to discover Australia as a whole. However, 
This is all a personal interpretation. As Clark only reads, discovered this territory, 1770, there is not a large amount of context provided there. So if someone interprets that to mean he was the first person to hear, that is a personal interpretation. And by dictionary meaning, as we discussed with Cassie, our first speaker, the Oxford Dictionary describes discover to mean to find something unexpectedly or during a search, which is what Captain Cook did. And with our adjustment to the inscription, it would say he discovered it with the Commonwealth of Nations. So therefore, it clarifies that aspect of it and can clear up some confusion regarding it being misinterpreted as discovering the Australia firstly. Um, we cannot word the plaque to adhere to every person's personal interpretation of the word discover. So if a few tourists, such as the um, survey mentioned, if a few tourists do interpret that to mean the Captain Cook and his expedition were the first people to find Australia, mm -hmm. that cannot be helped. And particularly as it's tourists, it's not the most reliable source because they do not have that well-versed knowledge of Australian history, whether basically or thoroughly, as would be taught through primary and high schools. So that's not an accurate source to cite in regards to the interpretation that could be taken from reading Captain Cook's statue. And instead, we should be focusing on the most widely held meaning of the word discover, which can be seen in the Oxford Dictionary and similarly in many others. <coughs> and with our amendment we've made to it, it would further clarify that he definitely was not the first here on a whole and was definitely just the first here uh, representing the Commonwealth of Nations. The third speaker has also committed the strawman fallacy in saying that we've mentioned <coughs> Senator Dodson when he has actually made no such appearance in any of our arguments. So have we mentioned him by name or anything he has said or studied? So to suggest that we have actually quoted him or referenced him at all is entirely misrepresenting our arguments as we have not mentioned him in any single aspect. The third speaker also said that by changing the plaque and changing it, amending it to say that he discovered Australia as part of the Commonwealth of Nations, it is Eurocentric and places more importance on our European history. However, it does clarify that he was with the Commonwealth of Nations, which in modern day times is not described as the entirety of Europe. Um, so it is also not practical to suggest it placed more importance on our European history as it is simply an inscription on a statue and cannot be accounted for the entirety of our history as a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, a statue that is intrinsically tied to our nation's European antiquity should not fall victim to erasure because of misinterpretation as a result of misrepresentation. Our first speaker, Cassie, spoke to you about how erasing history is a dangerous path for our democratic, diverse and peaceful nation to take and explained how perspectives on history change over time and the establishment and keeping of the statue is what makes Cook's historic contributions valuable. Our second speaker, Jess, discussed how the media has misrepresented the purpose of the statue and that the best way to honour our Indigenous Australians is to educate and remember more parts of history rather than obliterating controversial aspects. The Great Australian Silence runs so much deeper than a 138-year-old statue and an interpretable plaque. The first step to challenging and fixing our nation's failure to tackle issues around the recognition of Indigenous peoples does not lie in tearing down and obscuring parts of our national history. The path to healing needs to begin with the rewording of the back inscription of the statue to clarify he discovered Australia as part of the Commonwealth and targeting the absence of memorials for Indigenous Australians in their history. So as the negative team, we strongly believe that the Captain Cook statue in Sydney's Hyde Park should be, not be removed. Thank you.